15, uh, 15 years. And the prevalence in the different study is less than 20% in cat. But for this reason, this is the more common disease in cat when uh, genetic cat. This is a study, it's a recent study from UK that was performed in uh, general practice. And they study a huge number of cats around the uh, 300,000 uh, cats, and they obtain a prevalence and uh, the prevalence of 1.2%. Uh, and the clinical side was only present in 66% six, uh, of cats with CKD. Uh, another uh, interesting thing that they found uh, is that the uh, median survival time was almost uh, 400 days, and all the diagnosis, so main, the, the way to obtain the diagnosis was, uh, was when uh, they obtained blood for pre anesthesia procedure or when they did the genetic uh, moni uh, monitoring. Here we can observe the, the different breed where is more prevalent this disease and Burmese is the most common cat affected for this disease. What is the risk factor for the CKD? Um, I think it is very interesting that uh, there, there was a, an, an epidemiological uh, study and they found a correlation between the annual vaccination and CKD. What is the explanation for that? that when you produce the vaccine, you use uh, the cranberry uh, feline, uh, feline cells to produce the vaccines. And these cells that inject to the cat uh, had, uh, has antigen, and this antigen produce an immune response in the cat. And this immune response produce uh, antigen, uh, antibody antigen complex, and this uh, antigen uh, and this complex are deposited in the kidney. Another interesting thing that they found is that can be correlation with the severe, se se severe dental disease. A human being has been observed that when a, a person has a, a severe dental disease can produce um, pro-inflammatory cytokines secondary to the endotoxemia, and this uh, produce antibody, and this antibody again uh, are deposited in the, in the kidney. And another study that I think is very interesting that uh, could be a correlation or association between the feline immunodeficiency virus in cat with CKD uh, younger than 11 years. Um, the other risk factor are hyperthyroidism, recent anesthesia, medication, mainly NSAIDs, diuretics, um, renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system modulator, mainly ASAID and um, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, the blocker of the receptor of the uh, angiotensin, antibiotic uh, such as aflatoxin, aminoglycoside, and the chemotherapy, mainly uh, the doxorubicin. Another factor that can uh, can influence in the in uh, in the CKD is a low body condition, uh, weight loss, dehydration, polyuria, polydipsia, uh, previous cystitis, uh, cystitis of fluid. Um, but if we see this, mainly are clinical signs of the CKD patient. And another risk factor is the diet, male and the breeds, mainly the Burmese, have uh, mentioned it before. Causes that can produce the CKD. The main causes is the interstitial nephritis. The disease is idiopathic. We don't know uh, the cause, but we can see that uh, telomere shortening in the cells of the proximal and distal tubule. This increased renal cells did, that is a hypoto a hypotosis, inflammation, fibrosis, mineralization and could be associated again with the vaccination, dental disease. And there is a new um, infectious di disease, this virus called Morbilli virus. And this virus has been detected in many, many cats with CKD, but a real association has not been found now, nowadays. Another cause is, la glomer is the glomer glomerulopathy. This is not so common, only described in the 50% of cats, a different uh, is a very different to the dogs, and the cause mainly as infection. The infection can produce glomerulopathy in, in cat is FIB, FLB, FIP, Bartonella, Leishmania, and Leptospira. 
uh, another cat can present immune primary immune mediated disease uh, as uh, glomerulopathy, neoplasia, or secondary to metabolic disease. And neoplasia, the main neoplasia that we can find in cat is the lymphoma. Okay, and the hereditary or congenital disease described in cat is amyloidosis and polykist and police, uh, poly, uh, polycystic kidney disease uh, in the cat. What is important in prognosis, prognosti, prognostic factor is mainly uh, we can see or we can make the classification uh, according to the iris. The median survival time in iris 2 is uh, around uh, three years. Median survival time for iris 3 is around two years. And the median survival time for Iris four is more or less the one month. Another uh, factor that we have to consider for the prognosis is the hyperfatemia, the proteinuria, anemia, and weight loss. And what's happened with the hypertension? Because all the time we think that hypertension can influence in the uh, as a prognostic factor, but no non study has been um, non study has been described that. Uh, nowadays, so more investigation uh, are needed to try to find a correlation between between the hypertension and the prognosis. And the CKD is presented in older cats, so many comorbidities can be present in the same patient, mainly di diabetes mellitus, hyperthyroidism, cystitis, ureteritis, primary hypertension, cardiomyopathies, enteropathies, neoplasias, hyperkalemia, idiopathic hyperkalemia, infectious diseases, osteoarthritis, and pancreatitis. So this is a, a case, Sheldon. Is a, he is a feline domestic show hair, nine years old, a male neutral, and the reason of the, cons uh, the consultation was anorexia, lethargy, polyuropolydipsia, vomiting, weakness, and the owner described that all the clinical signs start uh, as acute onset, okay? But previously, uh, that in his uh, bed, they make uh, analyze, uh, blood works, uh, sorry, and they described that probably they had been um, uh, diagnosed uh, by CKD two months ago, but he, this, he uh, they didn't present as uh, the the analysis, the blood analysis. He is uh, in the dark cut and felt fit uh, status was negative when with, uh, when he was a kitten. He presented weight loss, polyuria, polydipsia, apath uh, lethargy, anorexia, nausea, vomito, diarrhea, and poor quad. But another clinical sign that can you observe in the CKDs or a ulcer, gingivitis, necrosis of the margin of the tongue, halitosis, bilina or hematochesia, uh, muscular atrophia, hypothermia, muscular tremors, uh, weakness, uremic pericarditis, uremic pneumonitis, uh, hypertension, hypertension, encephalopathy, blindness, and hemorrhagic diathesis. So a cat can present a lot of clinical signs when present uh, CKD. But it's very important to uh, keep in mind that some cats don't have any kind of clinical sign, and these cats are asymptomatic, and it, it has been described in uh, almost 25% of cats with CKD. In the general, uh, in the general uh, physical examination uh, in Sheldon, we found lethargy, permucous mem membrane, dehydration, in the abdominal part pain, the kidney, uh, where it's slightly decreased in sight. He has mild periodontal disease and the body condition score was a little bit uh, lower than the normal. And it's very important uh, to uh, measure or to see or cl classificate the muscle condition score, mainly in cat with CKD, because we have to remember the CKD produced sarcopenia. And the uh, uh, muscle condition score, the Sheldon was a little bit uh, lower. And the coat is, was, in, uh, uh, was in poor condition. And his, uh, he uh, had presented um, um, hypertension, okay? According to the diagnosis that 
we performed in Sheldon, we found a uh, severe anemia and uh, normocytic normochromic no uh, no regenerative anemia. And the hematocrit was 14.7%. Uh, and the, in the block biochemistry, we found an increased value of the creatinine, uh, the urea, phosphorus, and a low level of the um, potassium. On the other, on the other hand, we if we observe the total calcium, the total calcium was within the normal limit, but it was the upper range, uh, the the upper normal range. So we have that keep in mind as well. And the urine analysis, we found a decrease uh, urinary specific gravity and, and pH was uh, five and the sediment was inactive. We did the UPC and he present a high UPC that was uh, interpreted as um, uh, proteinuria. And we did an urine culture that no graph was obtained. And the total T4 was the uh, within the reference range. And there's not the retrovirus was negative, but we did more, more tests, but we're talking about later. And the ultrasound that we uh, we made in in Sheldon, we found chronic bilateral renal changes with, with bilateral cortical cyst. Okay, and later we're gonna talk about the changes that we can observe in the abdominal ultrasound. So we are from uh, with a patient with CKD. Okay, but we had think this is a CKD progression. I mean, because in the past the owner think or remember that uh, the vet or his vet, um, their vet, uh, they comment that Sheldon has CKD or we are from uh, in the CKD exacerbation. So what is the uremia? The uremia is the clinical syndrome due to the loss of renal function. It's mainly when a cat has azotemia and present clinical signs or severe clinical signs. Um, there is produced uh, the uremia for accumulation of toxic metabolites. And here we can observe different kinds of metabolites, but the main is the urea. And the clinical sign that you can observe in the uremia is uremic uh, gastroenteri gastroenteritis, hyperthyroidism, anorexia, lethargy, and weight loss. And main, the, all the alterations, what we're going to observe in the biochemist, in the, in the in the biochemistry uh, is secondary or produced for the loss of function on the nephrons. What is the pathogenesis of the uremia? There is three main uh, mechanisms. One is the altered expression of electrolyte and water. And this, uh, this is not or does not uh, allow a good control or compensa compensation uh, with the phosphate. And uh, this, this thing we are going to observe when it's lost more than 80% of the uh, nephron uh, function. Uh, and another mechanism is the reduced excretion of the organic solute that everybody knows that mainly that's produced, that is accumulated the uremic toxin. And this plasma urea correlates correlate with the uremic solute. For that reason, urea can indicate something about the, uh, about the uremia. And finally, we can change uh, alter uh, hormone synthesis, mainly calcitriol that is decreased, and this, uh, and that, and this allowed that produce uh, the hyperthyroidism, and uh, even the renal osteodystrophia. And uh, we have two, uh, Keep in mind that the PTH is a hormone, and this hormone is uh, is also an uremic toxin. Okay, and another uh, alteration is that uh, there is a decrease of the erythropoietin that is associated with the anemia. The clinical signs uh, that we can observe in the GI tract mainly is waste loss, secondary to the anorexia, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, catabolic factor, and hormonal factor. And the uremic gastritic is very, very uncommon in cats and dogs. Mainly in the uremic gastritic in humans, you can observe ulcers, but in cats, doesn't happen. And uh, for another way, uh, see, you can see... Galtomatite, fibrosa, mineralization, fibrosa. 
Andrea Augustus Gastrino Ligus. It's not correlated with the level of the gastrin. This is uh, important because all the time we think that we treat a CKD or a remake crisis, we need to use uh, gastroprotectant. But here the evidence uh, is, telling, is telling us that it's not uh, needed to use a uh, gastroprotectant because no ulcer is present in cats with uremic crisis. We can find uh, uremic enterocolitis. Enterocoli uh, this is uncommon. Uh, you can see hemorrhagic uh, diarrhea and can increase the ammonium and increase the uremia. And you can see more common the constipation secondary to dehydration or the hypokalemia or can be secondary to the treatment with the uh, phosphate binder. And the azotemia. If we see a cat with azotemia all the time, we, we have to think about that. We are from uh, pre-renal azotemia, intrinsic, uh, intrinsic renal azotemia, or post-renal azotemia. Thinking in, in Sheldon, maybe you have a component, the pre-renal azotemia, secondary to hypovolemia or dehydration, or E at the same time, plus uh, to the intrinsic uh, renal disease, mainly chronic renal disease, acute kidney injury, or exacerbation of the chronic kidney uh, disease. Clinical differentiation between the azotemia and the uremia. Mainly, we have to think how ill is the patient. I mean, that when you are front a patient with uremic crisis, you, you, have, uh, you have to see uh, anorexia or a ulcer, vomiting, diarrhea. This is a, a cat very ill. I mean, that uh, when you see uh, a stable azotemia, it's a cat normal, uh, has uh, it little changes uh, about the body condition score or muscle condition score, changes in the coat, but it's progressive, ret retinal changes and dehydration, but remic crisis, you see a very ill patient. How we can try to differentiate between the acetemia if pre-renal or mainly if we are uh, treating uh, acute renal failure versus uh, CKD. If we can see all the clinical signs or even the uh, systolic blood pressure, we cannot different according to this table, okay, or according to the to the text. But if we uh, see uh, the block words or labs analysis that we can do, we can try to help us or help ourselves to try to difference between uh, acute renal failure and CKD. If we can observe here the calcium, the calcium can be increased in the CKD, but it's abnormal or it's uncommon, sorry, for the acute renal failure. Uh, potassium, uh, potassium can be low in the CKD and that doesn't happen in, in the acute renal failure. Metabolic, uh, metabolic acidosis is moderate to severe in the acute failure in comparison with the CKD that is mild to moderate. And another thing that's interesting is when you see the sediment or urinary sediment in the acute failure, it's more common to find cast and that is uncommon to find uh, the cast in the CKD. And another thing that we can help ourselves is the kidney sites. The kidney site can tend to be um, uh, decreased in size in the CKD or could be normal. Inst uh, instead of in acute renal failure, you can see uh, renomegaly, for example. And the hemat hematocrite so, uh, tend to be normal in the patient with acute renal uh, failure at the beginning of the disease. Instead of in CKD, you can find anemia uh, very commonly. Um, what is the azotemia? The azotemia is composed mainly for the urea, okay, that this is uh, increased, and the urea is the nitrogenous was product excreted uh, uh, in the urine, and this urea is inversely proportional to the uh, uh, glomerular filter, uh, filtration rate. But what happened? Why this not tan specific the urea? in cats or in dogs, mainly because there is a tubular urea reabsorption that is unreliable. Uh, we don't know how much is reabsorbated of the urea in the tubules, and the urea production and secretion is not constant. For that reason, it's not a good market for the uh, renal disease. 
And um, there is one study that described that Meiku has tend to have uh, higher values of the of the uh, urea when you uh, give a cut a high protein diet. A gastro gastrointestinal bleeding can produce increase uh, of the blood urea uh, in the blood and high catabolism, starvation, fever, and infection, and even some drugs such as glucocorticoid, acetropine can increase the values of the urea, and even oxytetracycline can decrease the level of uh, urea because decrease the protein synthesis. And the creatinine is increased as well in the azotemia, which everybody knows. And we have to think that this is a good marker, the creatinine, uh, if then he comes or the it, sorry it comes from the muscle degradation is invest, inversely proportional to the glomerular filtration rate um and even when a cat has little bit increase of the level within the the referent uh, range we have to uh point of view and think and that can, this cat can start to present a CKD and we have to control in the future, okay? And uh, the creatinine has correlation with the urea and all the recommendation is try to have a baseline value in a cat when it was younger or when and was, was healthy. And the, uh, another study have described that some breeds have present high values, the creatinine, such as Birman, Siberian, Somalis, and Siamese. And even is uh, the patient uh, at it before one hour or, or four hours before to take the sample can increase the values of creatinine. What happened to creatinine and CKD? The, uh, the creatinine is used for the iris classification, can, uh, can have intra-individual variability, but uh, is less pre present in cats with uh, azotemia. But this marker, biomarker, has a low sensitivity because they need to start to increase the level of creatinine that the glomerular function or the glomerular filtration rate had decreased even uh, 75% uh, to start uh, uh, the increase of the creatinine. Uh, for that reason, is uh, is a late biomarker. Uh, and it is important to know that the creatinine is important for uh, as a productive factor because it's uh, used for the iris classification. Another biomarker is the SDMA. This one is potentially shaped a lot of glomerular filtration, highly excreted by the kidney. It's a specific uh, biomarker for the renal function. It's used currently for the iris classification but we have to consider that can be um, can be increased in patients uh, that have been dehydrated. Okay, so uh, all the recommendations when you obtain a higher value of the of the of SDMA, you have to repeat in two four weeks again to confirm this uh, increase. And what is important. This is an uh, early biomarker for, for kidney disease because when when uh, drop the, the glomerular filtration rate to around the 25% to 30%, start to increase the SDMA. So that is important because the creatinine needs to uh, drop the uh, glomerular filtration rate 75%, okay? is not affected for the uh, for the muscle condition score and currently uh, we are not the the reference range in kittens maybe in kitten could be a little bit increased in cat is, is uh, till 14 maybe in kitten could be 15 or even uh, 16 okay um and again uh, the recommendation is to have a baseline sample when the cat was young and healthy. Okay, how we can inter interpret the the SDMA? Interpret it with the clinical sign abnormality that you can find in the ultrasound, 
during a specific gravity present or not the proteinuria, or even is the cat present or not uh, hypertension. But what's happened? All the time we try to think that there is a very good correlation between the creatinine and SDMA. Even one laboratory said that the correlation was 100%. But this study have described that a, a percentage of, of cats can present low or normal number of SDMA and creatinine could be increased, or even the creatinine could be increased. And if you see the classification, uh, the Irish classification could be in a stage four, and if you see the SDMA could be in a stage three. So the important that not all CAT has a really good correlation between creatinine and SDMA. It will see seldom, seldom has <clears throat> the creatinine in 5.8, and if we see the classification, the classification would be uh, a stage four. But if we see only the SDMA is 30, uh, 36 and the classification is mainly between two and three, mainly three. So there is not a good correlation. So the SDMA uh, is not a good marker for, for cell done. The phosphorus. The phosphorus can uh, mainly can produce alterations secondary to the renal hyperthyroidism. We can see mainly the hyperfosfatemia. That's occur when the renal function decreases uh, less than 18, 18 uh, 5%. That's uh, secondary hyper, uh, that hyperfosfatemia is produced this, uh, for the stimul stimulation for, uh, by the PTAs. And it produces and uh, decreases synthesis of calcitriol via inhibition of the 1-alpha hydroxylase in tubular cells and stimula and this stimulates the PTA synthesis. In another way, uh, the PTAs uh, can produce stimulation of the fibroblast growth factor 23. And this is a new biomarker, uh, IDES is commercialized from this year. And, and what, is, what is the fibroblast uh, growth factor 23? It's a hormone regulating pothromeostasis is secreted by the osteoblasters and the osteo, osteocytes and decrease the phosphate reabsorption and increase the phosphaturia to try to control the level of phosphorus in the blood. Um, and what is more important with this biomarker that precedes the phosphorus increase in early CKD, we're talking about later, but it's very interesting biomarker for the early disease. And these uh, F FDF uh, have very good correlation with the PTAs, even with the SDMA, okay? When we are from a cat with hyperphosphatemia, all the time we have to keep in mind uh, the calcium because we have to uh, try to calculate the product calcium plus uh, for uh, phosphorus to try to define if the cat is suffering or not soft tissue uh, calcification. What kind of clinical sign can produce the hyperthyroidism in cat? Vomiting, nausea, diarrhea, and constipation. What happened with the calcium? With the calcium, mainly we can find normal, decrease or increase it. Uh, so all the recommendation is try to measure the genocide calcium because we have to remember the total calcium is unit or joint to different kind of protein or, uh, or another minerals, okay? But um, another thing that has been published recently as the total calcium can uh, incorrectly pre predict the hypercalcemia in 32% of cat with CKD. So that is very important. For that reason, mainly when you obtain the total calcium in the upper limit has happened with Sheldon, the recommendation is to do the genocide calcium, okay? Uh, what find uh, or what, how much common is the hypocalcemia? It's only present in 10% of cats with CKD. And that's uh, the, the reason why it happened. The hypocalcemia is not clear. Uh, the hypothesis is the mass effect law with the hyperphosphatemia that displays uh, to the calcium. 
uh, and conversion to calcium occurs in the proximal tubules that limited the advance uh, of the CKD, and mainly hypocalcemia that present the cat with CKD is asymptomatic. Hypercalcemia is more common, uh, is present in 29% of cat with CKD, can produce the hypercalcemia uh, damage or direct damage in the, in the kidney. And this hypercalcemia is produced when urinary infection uh, decreases, mainly because decrease the glomerular filtration rate, and because it produces a, a decrease of PTAs degradation, okay? And one important thing that we have to uh, keep in mind is sometimes a primary hypercalcemia or idiopathic hypercalcemia in cat can produce secondary, secondarily uh, CKD, but a CKD can produce hypercalcemia. So, so sometimes you never know what is first. So the hypercalcemia or the CKD. According to the electrolytes, we can see changes in the potassium, mainly hypokalemia that is most, most common in cat, and mainly in the stage one, two, three, uh, uh, two, sorry, two, three, uh, uh, according to the uh, iris classification, is presented in 10 and 30% uh, um, of cat with CKD. There is association with hypertension, but nobody uh, know the reason of the association. And sometimes the calcium, the sorry, the potassium deficiency can press can be present in the tissue, but when you measure in the plasma, is normal. Okay, the the classical right. clinical sign is the ventrofection when the cal percent uh, values low than three milliequivalent per liter of the, the potassium. And the, another clinical sign is anorexia, muscle uh, wasting, weakness, vomiting, and polyuria, okay? Because when you have uh, low levels of uh, potassium, it's reduced, it's reduced the ability to concentrate uh, the urine. Uh, on the other hand, can produce fibrosis, uh, in the tubular in, uh, in the tubular interstitial because produce uh, inflammation uh, this hypokalemia okay when we treat a patient with a chronic uh, hypokalemia the indicate is try to uh, to to get the normal limit between 1 to 3 days depend on depending uh, on uh, the chronicity of the disease and the hyperkalemia is described mainly in iris 4 Okay, in the in the terminal disease, and can be uh, um, alongside with the uh, oliguria and uria, or can be high, this hyperkalemia secondary and medicament mainly uh, ACDA and angiotensin receptor blockers. On the other hand, the sodium we can find hypernatremia mainly uh, secondary to dehydration or sodium rotation, or we can find hyponatremia secondary for water retention. Anemia, this is very frequent. Is uh, described mainly in between uh, 15 to 30 percent of cat and even between uh, 30 to 65 percent of cat they have a CKD in the future can uh, can suffer or can produce anemia okay this anemia is a pronostic factor so it's important to treat it and detect it and it tend to be worsening in advanced iris stages and this anemia is proportional to loss of renal function and to the iris classification and the type or the principal type that you're gonna see is a normal CT, normal chromic non-generative anemia and what's happening uh, about the iron because how I mentioned before, uh, you don't see ulcer or gastric ulcer in cats. So mainly the deficiency, deficiency of iron cat with CKD is functional more than uh, more than produced by produced by by lucid. Another causes that can produce uh, anemia in cats are all of these, but mainly is the shortening the the retrosal erythrocytes survival mainly for uremic toxin hemolysis or prometer removal by reticuloendothelial uh, cells. 
If we do an urinalysis in a cat with CKD, uh, as seldom we can find a decrease uh, in the capacity of the concentrate urina. So uh, seldom have um, the urinary specific gravity in 10, 20, 22. But this is important. We, ca we have to do with the refractometer, okay? And um, in the past, we can find a lot of refractometer or veterinary refractometer for dogs and cats or only for cats. And different study has has described that it's not necessary. Even in one study in New Zealand, they found a low low level or number of the specificity uh, when you use the specific refractometer for, uh, for cats. So a uh, normal refractometer is uh, is okay for 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 classificate the urinary specific gravity. Even uh, in the past, it was described a formula uh, to try to correct the, the urinary specific gravity in cat, but that formula is incorrect as well. So it is uh, currently is not recommend to use it. And the pH, the base pH, uh, we can we can uh, evaluate mainly in the urinary step. We can, if we remember, Sheldon has a decreased pH in the urine, and all these cases can produce uh, or can be acidified for the urine. Mainly in the case of Sheldon, could be secondary for mild metabolic uh, acidosis. And another. Uh, thing that uh, is very important to consider in cats is that uh, all the time the in the diphtic uh, the the leukocytes is gonna give us uh, a false positive because the urine of cats contain leukocyte esterase and another oxidant agent and for that reason you obtain all the time a false positive for uh, for for leukocytes in the in the deep sleep. for that reason it's not recommend to see the leukocytes in the deep sleep in cat. Protein has, uh, as we know, the protein deep sleep can be very useful in dogs when we uh, compare or or when we use it with uh, with the with the urinary specific gravity, but in cats. Uh, many factors can influence to the positive of the protein in the diphtic. One is the pH, bleach, ammonium, active sed uh, sediment, or even there for uh, keep obtain false negative in very dilute urine, very acid urine, even uh, when uh, basinium protein is present. Okay, or we can obtain a uh, false positive when it's too high uh, the urinary specific gravity, or for hormone called Causin, this is secondary for a felinin. Felinin that the felinin is the hormone that gives the smell to the urine of, of cat. For that reason, when one study uh, compare if is reliable uh, um, to use the deep stick in cat as happened in dog, they described that there was not a very there was not a good correlation between the deep stick and the UPC. For that reason, the recommendation is in CAT is always measuring the UPC apart, okay? Uh, what is the recommendation when we do the UPC? It's measured without inflammation or hematuria. I mean, we need an inactive sediment to do the UPC. What's happened? Some recent study have to evaluate how can influence the active sediment in the result of the proteinuria and they uh, described that can be increased a mild or just a, a moderate amount of protein in the urine when you use an, an active uh, sediment. But the recommendation is try to use an inactive sediment for measure the UPC. Um, Around uh, 20 percent of cat present uh, proteinuria uh, when cat has uh, when cat have a CKD, and even this decrease uh, this proteinuria in cats when have CKD in terminal stages. The better way to obtain the the more feasible way to 
to obtain a good result, a feasible result of UPC, is try to obtain three different urine in the morning. You can use hydrophobic sun litter. Even one study described that hydrophobic sun litter not, uh, not alter the result of UPC and make a pool of these three urines and these pools to send uh, to the lab to make uh, to make sure the UPC. What's happened that everybody knows it's not very easy to try to obtain uh, a, a free cut sample from cats. So we can obtain by cytosynthesis the sample and send to the to the lab. What's happened that there is uh, an study in, in uh, a study in dogs that they describe the dogs when you obtain the 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 sample in the hospital by cytosynthesis, increase the UPC mainly secondary for uh, stress, and this stress produce um, and hypertension. But okay, uh, but this information we don't have in cats, so uh, we can use the pool in cats, or we can use the urine that obtained in uh, by cytosynthesis. When you obtain a result increased, like uh, such uh, as uh, Sheldon, the recommendation is repeat after two weeks. And if we obtain a, a result borderline, uh, the recommendation is repeat after two months. Okay, Sheldon, we can see has uh, proteinuria and we, we have to think about the different cell diagnosis that can produce the proteinuria. The proteinuria could, could be pre-renal, mainly in Sheldon we have to that ha, uh, he has hypertension and that hypertension can produce proteinuria. Could be secondary or renal disease, mainly CKD, okay? Or could be post-renal, uh, ureter or, 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 ureter or two ureteral diseases, inflammation, infection, or plasma, that this is not the case of, of Sheldon. So we have to think mainly in this, um, those, in, in, in this, two causes of, of proteinuria, okay? That in cell could be the renal disease or maybe secondary to hypertension. That is important to keep in mind for the treatment. And the bacteria we can detect in, in the urine, uh, the better way to try to find bacteria is do the uh, urinary sediment and staining, okay? Uh, if we do that, the sensitivity is uh, 80% and the specificity is almost uh, 100%. So this is the better way. Right now, there is IDEX CDBU. I don't know if you, you have in your, your clinic, but what happened with the IDEX has, very, has a very good uh, negative predictor value or even a very good uh, positive predictor value, but the most of cases is between uh, doubt. I mean, that some cat, when you see uh, the machine, uh, there is uh, the machine ask you that you have to confirm the presence of the bacteria. And this is uh, not reliable. So the recommendation is when you find the CDB uh, a no clear uh, result, you need to do the urinary sediment and stain it, okay? Even uh, if, this article is about uh, um, exacerbation CKD. And they found that uh, when you found bacteria in the urinary sediment, it's very predicted to try to find, or it's very predicted, or uh, there is a very good correlation that you're gonna find um, a positive uh, bacterial culture. So, Regarding to urine culture, the prevalence of positive culture in cats with CKD is 18%. Um, and again, it's correlated with active sediment, but some cats with CKD can present occult UTI or subclinical UTI. If you see here, the number of cats is high. So it's very human. And for that reason, is the recommendation is try to do um, urine culture in a cat with CKD because these infections can ascend and produce uh, uh, pyelonephritis due to the as ascending uh, UTI. 
the most common um, bacteria isolate is the Escherichia coli, and there is not association between UTI and survival and UTI and progression the uh, sec ID. What we are going to observe in the abdominal ultrasound is more kidney, irregular kidney, hyperechoic uh, renal cortex and medulla, loss of corticomedullary differentiation, estration in cortex and or medulla, renal infarct infarction, uh, nephrocalcinosis, cyst, doppler in case, uh, renal perfusion, or even you can see uh, pilectasia. Even the pilectasia could, find, could be uh, found in the 60% of cats. Uh, this is secondary mainly for the polyuria polydipsia that can present a uh, cat with uh, CKD. And if we see all these changes that uh, seldom presented are present here in all description description of, of the, the finding that you, you can see in the ultrasound. And the hypertension, CKD is the most common cause of hypertension could be present between 20 to 65 percent of cats with CKD is not related to the severity of CKD or iris stage. That means that you can you can see a cat with a stage one, and this cat can have can have a hypertension. For that reason, it's very important to measure the blood pressure or systolic blood pressure in all cats in all states of iris. Um, and hypertension is associated with worsening of proteinuria, and proteinuria is um, is a marker for pronotic factor. Okay, you can use the Doppler oscillometric, and you can use uh, the high limbs on the four limbs. But there is another study that described the tail is another good uh, position to measure the 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 pressure. And we all the time we we have to keep in mind that. The hypertension can produce damage mainly in the target organ uh, damage. These organs are eyes, brain, heart, and kidney. And we have to remember that cells don't have hypertension. Maybe this hypertension is uh, worsening uh, the CKD. So that is important to keep in mind. And 60% of cats have a re retinopathy. And another clinical sign is lethargy, uh, retinal detachment, hemorrhage, blindness, cerebral hemorrhage, convulsions, uh, stupor, kidney damage, ventricular hypertrophia. So if we see uh, this algorithm to try to take the uh, decision, here uh, Sheldon has more than uh, 160 uh, the blood pressure. So mainly uh, the kidney, the kidney is one of the target organ damage could be affected. So the recommendation is try to start with anti-hypertensive anti therapy. Okay, but if we don't see any kind of sign in the tooth, we can see the rest or we can follow the rest of the algorithm. So if we come back to Sheldon, Sheldon, when arrived to us, uh, he has the creatinine increase in 5.8, um, but he presented the hydration. We are not if it's a progression of the CKD or even uh, CKD exacerbation. So we have to try to, uh, to see what is happening with Sheldon and try to, to classify adequately uh, according to Iris to Sheldon because he's arrived with creatinine uh, high in 5.8 and he was presented the hydration likely when rehydrated uh, to to Sheldon this creatinine uh, decreased the, due to to the prerenal factor so is it primary kidney disease well if we see the our patient yes he we are front uh, 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 in a primary renal disease, okay? So we have to decide, this is an exacerbation or only a progression. Well, how we can different, differentiate between the, those? <laughs> the CKD exacerbation, we're gonna see acute change in acetamia and they describe the owner of Sheldon that he was perfect days ago, 
Okay, so this is one one point that we have to consider. And present clinical sign anorexia, lethargy, weight loss, vomiting, diarrhea. That's what's present in in in, in this patient. Asotemia uh, can be result, uh, re reversible with treatment. So when we see a patient, we have to try to figure it out if we are from an exacerbation or not try to recommend the euthanasia immediately. Okay. Um, causes that can produce this exacerbation, dehydration, pyelonephritis, ureteral, ureteral uh, obstruction, ischemia, mainly uh, secondary to anesthesia and says for SMI trauma, others, cardiorenal syndrome, proteolusin enteropathy, uh, PKD, but the main cut is I know the cause of this exacerbation. For that reason, we need to treat mainly five days to see what's happening with the clinical sign of the patient and the clinical state of the patient or with the creatinine. And could be secondary to pancreatitis, we don't know. A lot of cats, mainly a cat with CKD, can present pancreatitis at the same time. Um, the cause is unknown, but uh, we don't know if the pancreatitis can produce uh, worsening of the CKD or the uh, exacerbation of the CKD can produce secondary to, uh, can produce the pancreatitis. And another thing, if this, pa this patient present hypovolemia, and this hypovolemia can produce an acute, uh, an acute renal failure and can produce a pancreatitis. Well, it's important that pancreatitis, you can treat it and it's not, uh, it's not a prognostic factor for the patient. So in Sheldon, we measured the specific filling lipase and was very, very increased. That is likely pancreatitis. And we did another, another test mainly for the anemia and PCR freeborn disease it was negative and, and cum test and it was, uh, I, I, and it was uh, negative. So how we can manage a kidney disease? Treatment mainly is low the CKD progression, improve the quality of life when we are from a patient with iris stage three and stage four, improve the clinical sign, control alteration, treat hypertension, treat proteinuria, nutrition, renal protection, mainly are palliative treatments. So after the dehydration, after the exacerbation of the, his uh, uh, CKD, the creatinine of Sheldon decreased to 3.6, and the classification, final classification for Sheldon was IRI3 CKD with hypertension and proteinuria. So we need to treat it. So very important is manage and uh, the uh, the hydration. Sorry, um, normally the cat with CKD has no able to comp uh, to compensate uh, the poly the polyuria. So we need to give more water. Or um, so uh, even uh, the hydration can be influenced by the vomiting, nausea, decrease the water cons uh, consumption, and decrease the water intake. So very important to give to all the cat fresh water, press several bowls of water around the house, water fountain, or even you can use only with diet, okay? And, you can use uh, even a subcutaneous uh, isotonic uh, fluid, okay? Or even in some can need feeding tubes, esophageal tube or nasoesophageal tubes for hydration. There is another way to, to put or to inject the fluid or subcutaneous fluid is to use subcutaneous ports. I don't have experience with that because here in Spain are very expensive and you have to consider that to uh, put this kind of port, you need to anesthetize uh, the patient. And this patient with CKD anesthetized could be uh, a risk. So you have to consider the benefits or not uh, to put or not uh, a port in a cat. According to the nutrition, the nutrition is recommended since iris or from iris stage two, okay? You need to change the diet. The to a renal diet. The renal diet uh, decrease and prevent a uremic episode, decrease mortality, uh, prolong the so survival time. We can see even the we can double the survival time in in cats that uh, receive a renal diet, decrease the urea and the phosphorus, PTH, 
even decrease the, the FGF23. You can use the wet diet or dry diet, even if you can allow the delays try to give him wet diet, but we have to consider that some cats only prefer the, di the dry diet. To try to introduce the diet, you can take a long time. I mean, uh, some cats need only five days, seven days. I try to do it in, in 10 days, but some some cats need one month or you have, or you can try different uh, trademark of diet and some cat prefer one and prefer another one, okay? And the, the renal diets maintain the body condition score or even this diet, a renal diet, the way that you can use it in the nasal esophageal tube or esophageal tube, okay? What is important in case the cat present a very marked or severe anorexia, try to offer it whatever the cat wants, okay? Or it's not recommended to, to use the renal diet in patients that are hospitalized because uh, the cats can associate the stress suffering in, in, during the hospitalization with the food. So it's very important that uh, message. This diet are moderate uh, to low in protein, low in phosphorus, restricted in sodium, E present omega 3 supplementation that acts as uh, an anti inflammatory. Hyperphosphatemia. Our, our objective is this one is not to maintain the cat between the referral range because uh, there little bit increase mainly in step, uh, in step three or four can produce uh, that hyperparathyroidism. Hyperparathyroidism, sorry. For that reason, it's important to have this table in your console and to see it all the time when you control a patient with CKD, okay? You start to control the hyperphosphatemia only with the renal diet. After that, later you can you have to uh, resect the phosphor for six weeks, uh, six weeks that the cat start with the renal diet uh, with the empty stomach to see that is within the range or not that we need, okay? Is with the range that we need, continue monitoring every three or four months. In case that we cannot control with the renal diet after the one month, we need to add to the treatment uh, phosphorus binders. Okay. And again, reevaluate uh, four to six weeks after the start with the mix of food with phosphorus binder. What's happened with the FGF23? It's very interesting because uh, we, with this biomarker, we can detect early stage of CKD, mainly when we need to change the diet, okay? Uh, because the phosphorus is not so uh, early in comparison to F FGF, okay? So the recommendation is measuring mainly in cats uh, in stage one or two and to try to predict if the cat uh, gonna take or get any benefits with using a, a renal diet. So if the patient present a value of, uh, above uh, 400, that means that this patient needs to take uh, a renal diet. If the patient is between 300 to 400, it's continued monitoring and to till the cat increased over uh, uh, for, uh, 400 and introduced the renal diet. And the cat, if the less or above, um, below, sorry, below three, 300, is no evidence for the diet for fair restriction, continuing to monitor the kidney function. On the other hand, this could be uh, indicated the FGF, the FGF uh, 23 that we need to add or not a uh, uh, phosphate binder, uh, phosphate binder. But if we find a value in a cat in a stage two, three, or, or four, a value uh, above uh, 700, uh, 700, we need to add uh, phosphate binders. What happened with the hypertension? Hypertension, we don't know if need to, uh, to do a sodium restriction, but the diets include that. Uh, and the treatment usually is for life. 
we know a lot of medicaments or drugs for the treatment, but the main treatment is the amlodipine because this is a calcium channel blocker and this is a uh, decrease or this drug decreased the systolic blood pressure between 25 to 70 uh, milligram, uh, milligram the mercury. So, uh, and you can see a very high response and the dose in cats that present a systolic blood pressure less than uh, 200 is 0 0.625 uh, to five. and when you find a cat with a pressure or blood pressure uh, above 200 or upper 200 we need to start with the higher dose okay the second option is to use telmisartan but um, to the high uh, using a higher dose when you treat it for the proteinuria is two milligram uh, per kilogram <clears throat> and uh, the capacity to decrease the, the blood pressure is between uh, 20, 20 to 27. So it's not so potent in comparison with amlodipine. And what's happened, we have to, or what we can do to monitorize, to monitorize uh, the response to the hypertension, mainly try to obtain a cut between two, uh, between uh, 120 to 160 okay if the value is less than 120 probably you are you are passing with the dose so you need to reduce reduce the dose uh, of the patient uh, for that patient and the proteinuria the first step what we have to do is renal diet okay mainly if the patient not present a huge proteinuria as um, seldom Okay, we can use AC inhibitor or um, uh, angiotensin receptor blockers, okay? And there's not any study compare one and another, but in my experience, uh, I think that um, uh, angiotensin receptor blockers are better than the AC inhibitor, okay? What's happened? It's very important to uh, consider that when you use this inhibit, uh, these uh, blockers, can produce or inhibitor can produce an increase of the creatinine, but this increase is a low maximum on 25%, even 30%. So when you start distributing with this kind of drug, you need to recheck to the patient one week later and recheck the creatinine, electrolyte, uh, the systolic blood pressure, because can produce increase of the potassium or can produce increase of the creatinine. And this increase, if, if it's secondary to the drug, you have to change the drug or even stop the drug, okay? And the, uh, our objective in CAT with proteinuria is try to decrease the proteinuria on 80% of the UPC. And digestive side, mainly for the anorexia, you can, you can use mirtazapine, uh, use it for the nausea and the appetite stimulant. Um, uh, and this study have proved that they weigh, gain, gain weight. And you can use maropitone mainly for the nausea and vomiting. And recording that mentioned before, gastroprotector is not recommended right now, like a first line, uh, first line treatment for, for this cat. And hypokalemia, is, is present and uh, despite uh, the diet, you can use any oral supplementation, okay? Uh, any cat is uh, hospitalized, you can use uh, intravenous supplementation, but in, at home, you can use uh, the oral supplementation, okay? Um, the massive weakness result within the one, five days, depends on the, the patient. And you can measure again, one week later, the potassium or two weeks later the potassium and we don't know if the supplementation we needed for the life but all the time uh, I try to use uh, for the life in this patient because not all the patients can uh, come to the consult uh, uh, frequently and the darbopoietin is used for the um, uh, is used for the anemia we have to remember this is a synthetic uh, erythropoietin and we can use a uh, one microgram per kilogram every week until achieved and uh, 25 to 35% uh, 
the hematocrit, okay? If we achieve this goal, uh, we can reduce the frequency to the same dose to two uh, to four weeks, maintaining this uh, goal of the hematocrit. It's very important when we use this treatment to measure the systolic blood pressure because can produce hypertension and other side, side effects, like pure cell aplasia, seizures, vomiting, and fever. But it's not so common in comparison that the uh, erythropoietin, okay? And a small a number of cats can produce antibody for this synthetic uh, erythropoietin. And then on the other hand, it's recommended to, when you use the repoietin, use iron supplementation. I use the injection. Sometimes it could be painful for the cat, but uh, you you can put it only every three or every four weeks. And the follow up is important to keep in mind. This 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 must be individualized for for the patient. Blood test for the diagnosis and when the urinary crisis is resolved, review the patient two or two to four weeks to assess initial response to the treatment. And when the patient is stable, when uh, it's in IRS-1, the recommendation is once, uh, one, once uh, um, a year or twice a year. It is two, uh, three to six months and IRS-3 is two to, two, uh, two to four months. Finally, seldom we, we, uh, we treated with amlodipine, renal diet, uh, uh, UPC was normalized uh, with the treatment the diet and amlodipine. The hypertension was normalized. Hyperfosfatemia was controlled only with the diet. We used the oral supplementation, uh, potassium oral supplementation, that repoetin, um, that he presented a very good response and ar arrived to the 25% of hematocrite and subcutaneous hydration Monday and Thursdays. Maropitan for 21 days. But suddenly we lose the follow up after the four months of treatment and come back six months later for euthanasia uh, due to a new RMA crisis. And that's it. I'm sorry for, for the time. Can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we hear. So we can maybe proceed with a short presentation before the break. Uh okay. Or or yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. If you okay. uh, if you're ready, you can uh start now. Great, let's do so. Tai per trukelę visgi keliausime už gerų 20 minučių. Can you see my screen? Yes, perfect. Okay. So, well, this this presentation it's uh not not so interesting like the Jorge's one, but um well, I think that it's nice to have the opportunity to share with you uh to see how uh, through the the diets, we can treat uh, not only the renal diseases that we have seen in other presentation, but also the urinary problems that um we will see in the next presentation. So just to to give you an overview about the products we have, uh, I would like to say that for dogs, in the case of urinary problems, we have two options. We have the urinary one, they say, and urinary lopurine. And why do we have these two products? It's because uh, we have two main problems when we are thinking about urinary problems in dogs. On the one hand, we have um, oxalate and estrovite stones. And on the other hand, we have the rest of the other ones, okay? So as you can see here, mainly, uh, I mean, the most, the most common problems are from uh, estrovite and oxalate in the case of urinary diet or urinary problems. But also we have a, a smaller percentage of dogs that they need low urinary diets uh, because they have some other kind of stones like cysteine, but also those dogs that are uh, diagnosed with leishmaniosis and they are, they are, they are dead for that. 
So here you have um, both, uh, both products. So you can see that, uh, as I said, the most common stones that we can have or that we can find in, in dogs in urinary problems are estrobite and oxalate. So almost 40% of, of stones um, in dogs uh, are uh, estrobite stones. And obviously there are some um, predisposing factors, uh, you know, that in females are more frequent or that there are some diseases, I sorry, some breeds that are uh, more frequent too. And also oxalate, um, the, per, the, the probability is around uh, 36%. And also uh, you have in this case some predisposing factors. On the other hand, for urinary low purine, we have uh, we can treat with this diet the urate stones at the percentage is quite low, around four percent. But you know that there are some breeds quite common to have stones like Dalmatians, and also cysteine stones that the prevalence is around six percent. In this case, also they should be treated with urinary low purine. And also, as I said, uh, those dogs that um, are treated for leishmaniosis also the, the diet that has to be used is uh, urinary low purine. So, okay, so here it's again the same. Uh, it's a, a, again the same. Uh, the, we, we will see in the next presentation, but there are some common um, symptoms in urinary problems. But as I said, in 75% of the cases, we will find oxalate or estrobite stones. And in this case, the diet that should be used is urinary one. So the differences are uh, are sometimes not so easy to to understand. But uh, when we are thinking about this kind of diets, we have to to think that uh, the first uh, objective is to balance the minerals that we include in these diets to avoid any stone formation. So this is the the main objective. But also in the case of urinary stones, we have to play with the pH of the urine. So in the case of urinary diet, to avoid estrobite stones, we have to achieve an acid pH with the nutrition. So these, are, these two are the main objective of the diet, to play with the pH to uh, avoid the formation of the stone. So in the case of uri urinary diet, we have to move the pH to an acid pH to avoid estrobite stones but also to reduce the minerals that um, are the cause of these stones. In the case of urinary uh, low purine, what we have to, to, to do is also to, to play with the, with the pH, but here the most important thing is to eliminate or to reduce a lot the purines that we are using in this uh, diet. Okay, so they are quite similar, but the urinary low purine we um, are more focusing on the kind of uh, of these uh, purines that they have to be avoided in in a in a huge levels. Um, in the in the let's say urinary diseases for dogs, we have to also take into account the renal one. Um, so in the case of, for example, we will see when do we have to use one or another. But obviously, when a dog has renal problems, it's better to use a renal diet instead of urinary diet. So we will see when to choose one or another. Um, and here, for example, we see that when we have, um, uh, when we are using urinary low purine, but we have renal disease, we have to move from one to another. So here we have the main differences. So if you compare the renal diets with the urinary ones, with urinary low purine, but also with urinary, the other urinary, the normal urinary, you will see that, for example, renal diets, they have the level of protein much lower because in the renal disease, we have to avoid the, a huge work for the kidney, but also uh, the phosphorus is quite reduced in the renal compared with urinary because here in the renal, what we want to achieve is that the, the kidney ha uh, has to work as less as we can. So this is the main differences. In, in urinary, we decrease a little bit the protein compared with a normal product, but it's the, the in the renal, the difference is really big. And also in the phosphorus, because the phosphorus is the, uh, the mineral that uh, will influence a lot in the, in the progression of the uh, chronic renal disease. Okay, so uh, 
there are to, to cover, let's say, the urinary renal problems, we have for dogs three products, urinary, normal urinary, urinary lopurine, and renal. And for cat, the, the range is a little bit, um, uh, I mean, it's, it's a little wider because in, in cats, the urinary problems are really, really common. So in that case, we have three products, urinary, urinary low uh, calorie, urinary stress, and also um, the diet, uh, the wet diet. So here, uh, well, here just to say that in the case of dogs, when we are talking about urinary problems, we are focusing on stones, let's say. But in the case of cats, we have a disease that is more prevalent, that is the idiopathic uh, cystitis, that it's around or almost 60% of the problems of urinary in cats. So here we have to think about how to cover this disease through the nutrition or how through the nutrition we can prevent this disease. Another thing that it's quite important is that if we take into account all the diseases that we can find in cats, urinary problems at the end, the percentage is quite low. It's said that it's around 3%. But the problem is that the recurrence is really, really high. So when we have a urinary problem in cat, uh, a lot of times we have to use urinary for the whole life just to prevent that uh, this recurrence. So um, it's not a disease very common if we take into account everything. But um, once we solve it, we have to be uh, in alert, let's say, to avoid that this cat has, again, this kind of problems. And what we have seen here, uh, and this is completely different from dogs, is that the uh, urotelium in, in cats, uh, they have um, small quantities of glucosamine and chondroitin. So normally glucosamine and chondroitin, they are components that are found uh, in the joints. But in the case of urotelium or in cats, it has been described that uh, this urotelium also has this glucosamine and chondroitin. And it has been seen that if we add an extra supplement of this glucosamine and chondroitin to the diet, we can have the urotelium. And through that way, through the nutrition, we can prevent or help the idiopathic cystitis to be avoided. So uh, even urinary diets are um, focused on preventing stones, both, both in dogs and cats. In cats, we have to add the this extra objective that is to prevent the idiopathic cystitis. So here, uh, as I said, we have the normal urinary, let's say, in, the, in this case, we have the dry option and wet option. And the main objective here, like in, in cats, I sorry, like in dogs, it's to, uh, to play with the pH, to avoid the stones, also to uh, reduce the level of minerals that are the cause of stones. And in the case of cat, we include glucosamine and chondroitin to avoid idiopathic cystitis. Then we have the option uh, that it's a uh, urinary low calorie. And why we have that? It's because we know that a huge percentage of cats are sterilized and the sterilization with the body weight, with the urinary problems are really, really related. So that's why we have the option for sterilized cats. And, and in that case, the diet, the urinary diet, it's the same. Let's say the concept of the diet is the same. So it, it has also glucosamine chondroitin. It has um, also, uh, I mean, it also prevents the stones and the idiopathic cystitis. But because it's for sterilized cats, the level of energy is less, so it has less fat and more fiber. So I think that in 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 uh, if I think in in a lot of um, populations, let's say, uh, this diet it's uh, sometimes more used because the level of sterilization in cats is really really high, and this one will prevent also uh, overweight in those cats that they have uh, urinary problems and they uh, are also sterilized. And finally, it has been seen that the urinary problems are quite related with stress in cats and the stress uh, provokes more urinary problems. So it's a, like a cycle that it's really um, difficult to, 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 to cut. And uh, even there are some, uh, a lot of cats that with a normal urinary diet are working perfectly. Some 
other cats, they are really stressed when they have this disease and they need like this extra um, diet that it's the same, but I mean, it contains glucose, I mean, in chondritin, um, it prevents the stones, the hydropathic cystitis, but it also have a combination on uh, of melissa, fish peptide and tryptophan. And this combination is like, a, let's say, anti-stress combination for cats. So for those cats that are really stressed when they that they are feeling pain or when they uh, have hydropathic cystitis, this diet will uh, help them to be better uh, sooner. Because as I said, the hydropathic cystitis and the stress is really re uh, related. So if we attack both sides, uh, for sure we can prevent or control the disease better. And well, here it's just a study that we did to see how much we are able to reduce the cortisol in, 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 in blood after using this diet. And, and we saw that for sure using this combination on uh, with melissa, fish peptides, and tryptophan, we are able to reduce the cortisol level more than 50% on the blood. So this is the, the main um the the the, the main um um marker that we have to measure the stress and just uh to give you an overview here uh, we have the renal diets obviously we have renal for dog also renal for cat and in the case of cat we have wet too uh, here um just to say that uh Again, maybe the prevalence of this disease is not the highest one. So we have other diseases that are more prevalent in the clinic, but uh, it affects at, uh, uh, also dogs and cats when they are senior dogs or cats. For example, here it's, it's, it's obviously that when they are more than 10 years or even more than 15 years, the prevalence is really high. And uh, the same for cats, it's not the uh, most prevalent disease. But uh, for senior cats, uh, the prevalence is higher. And here, the most important thing is that it has been seen that when a dog or a cat is diagnosed with a uh, renal problem, um, it's important to use uh, a renal diet in the sense that uh, the, it's a disease that can be uh, progressing really fast. And this, um, these dogs and cats, for sure, they need a special diet to support the disease they have. So here, as I said at the beginning with dog, the main import, the most important thing is to reduce a lot uh, the phosphorus, that it's the main reason why the chronic renal disease is progressing, but also to reduce the, the level of protein. It does not mean not to use good protein. We have to use a high quality protein, but the level, uh, in urine diets, for example, of protein, it's around 22%. And in the case of renal, it's around 14%. So the, the level of protein, it's quite lower. And, uh, and well, the other uh, uh, characteristics of the diets are mainly focused on that the kidney has to work as less as, as we can. And just to uh, finalize my part, here you have, just to summarize everything, when do we have to use one diet or another diet? So in the case of estrovite stones, we have to use urinary diet, but when we have the other kind of stones, the first uh, option would, will be the diet, uh, the urinary diet, but the renal is also working. And for sure, when we have a renal diet, a renal problem, we have to use renal diet. In the case of cat, the same. So for estrovite, eh, we have the option of urinary range, but for the other stones, uh, we have if we have oxalate, we have urinary or renal, and for the other ones, we have to use renal. So uh, this um, selection is uh, depending on the minerals that the diet has and also the pH that this diet provokes to the urine. Okay, and in the case of cat, just to remark that we have three products uh, for urinary, urinary, urinary low calorie, urinary stress, but also wet and the same for renal. Renal cut, we have both options. We have the dry and we have the wet. And I will give my my word to Delia. I don't know, sorry. 
So, well, just to to finalize the, 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 my 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 slides are uh, here. You have the link to the Beds and Clinics. It's a Beds and Clinics website. Uh, here you will find a lot of uh, information, technical information for you. So I encourage you to to um, to visit the website. It's not only nutrition. You can find information about different diseases or different 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 issues. And now, yes, I I okay. know what to say, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to to everyone. I'm going to continue with the second part of of this presentation. And now Alba was talk about uh, some of the main advanced veterinary diets, but we would like to take the opportunity of this webinar uh, to explain you uh, more about advanced, not only advanced veterinary diets, but also advanced physio, uh, which includes maintenance and specialty products. Because I'm sure that you probably know that now, uh, well, we consider it's a perf the perfect time to present you this presentation because now we are relaunching the run and, and yeah, we would like to explain you more about this new active defense and how we have improved our formulas. So it will be a, a quick uh, presentation about, about that. So I'm sure that you, uh, that you know that Advance is a scientific brand and, and a super premium brand that, uh, which has always been positioned as a leading brand in the protection and the, in the territory protection, no? So uh, in advance, we have more than 25 years working on the defenses and then on the immune system. Then in, in 2018, uh, we relaunched the brand uh, with the current or with the all uh, advanced active defense with immunoglobulins and, and polyphenols that helps to eat defenses and natural barriers. And now in 2023 and 2024, uh, we want to move one step further on these territory uh, defenses, and we relaunch Advance with an innovative uh, formula around healthy microbiota. That now I'm going to explain you more about this about this change, and of course with this with this relaunch we are going to continue uh, protecting and taking care of our pets, but now from uh, from the intestine. So. Okay, so why uh, now we are focusing on the intestine and the microbiota? So basically it's because uh, there are results and, and studies that shows that the 70% of dogs and cat defenses are in the intestine. So uh, we know that it's very, very important to take care of this intestinal microbiota because uh, the microbiota acts as a natural barrier. So that's why uh, taking care of of, of this microbiota, it's key to, to our dog defenses and and to protect and uh, to protect them from the from the external uh, yeah from the pathogens. Yes, external pathogens. Thank you. So we also know that um, to to achieve this this intestinal microbiota, no, that this good. Uh, microbiota, we know that the diet is, is key. So we know that the diet is one of the principal factors that can modify the, the intestinal microbiota. And that's why a quality nutrition is key to having a, a good defenses and a healthy microbiota. So that's why um, we have uh, relaunched our, our, our brand and we have improved our formulas. And this is our new active defense. So it's very important to take into account that um, we continue uh, preparing and producing our recipes with high quality ingredients, because as I said, um, it's important that the ingredients are, uh, are that, that, that we have high quality ingredients, because if not, if, if we include uh, probiotics and prebiotics and other uh, specific ingredients, but we have a bad uh, quality ingredients, um, the the result is not is not good. So we continue with high quality ingredients like as animal protein as first ingredient, rice and whole grain cereals, and we are adding also peas and beet pulp. And then from the other side, we have uh, the active defense. No, so we have uh, reinforced our formula with prebiotics, probiotics, 
and fibers. No? So probiotics, as you know, are the, are the like bacteria that helps to maintain the uh, balance intestinal microbiota. Then the prebiotics are the like the food of those probiotics. And then we are adding also fibers. So um, th those are the, the new ingredients that, that we are adding. And yeah. Well, yeah, and we know. Okay. <laughs> okay, and we know that with this new formula, uh, we have tested and we have uh, internal uh, research that shows that clearly uh, helps to 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 have a, a healthy microbiota and a and a good defenses for for the pets. Here we have the the, the new image. So well, uh, as you have seen, uh, we are changing our formulas, but we are also changing our pack. And we consider that, and and everyone says that it's more clearer and more didactical, and and it's very easy to to understand how we are um um now communicating the 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 both sides of nutrition, no, the high quality ingredients and the ingredients related to the healthy microbiota, and um of course we are communicating we are communicating. Uh, more about these new ingredients and about this storytelling of that we are helping to your dog defenses on the front of pack and on the back of pack. But uh, of course, we continue communicating about the, the functional benefit and, the, and that all the products are adapted uh, to every stage uh, and, to every, and to every size in this case of the dog. So here you can, you can find the... Uh, you can see the, the the global portfolio. So this is how now the 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 dog the dog range in this case look like. We have a puppy and adult and a vitality range for for each life stage, and then we have we have other ranges for the specific needs, uh, the sensitive care, the light, and and for breeds for different breeds. And here we have cat. So in cat, the same. We have uh, two different ranges for sterilized and for non-sterilized cats. Uh, on non-sterilized, we only have kitten and adult. And under the sterilized range, we have junior, adult, and vitality senior. Then we have uh, two, uh, well, three different products for the specialty, for the specialty range for special needs: the sensitive care and the herbal. And we also have a wet range that is a. Uh, it's a novelty from the from last year, and we have different flavors for for adult for adult and for and for kitten cats. Then, uh, as you can see on the on the portfolio now, our senior uh, range uh, is named Vitality, and this is why that's why um, because we have um, improved and we have also changed it changed. Our 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 senior our senior platform because uh, there are different reasons. The first one is that uh, we did a market research and we found that the pet parents didn't identify their pets as a as a senior uh, dog or as a senior cat. Then they also didn't um, identify that that the in this case that senior cats or senior dogs have a specific needs when they are old. And uh, also, they don't know exactly when their pet becomes a senior. They don't know if it's with six, seven years. So that's why we have um, the, the opportunity to, to do a market research and to uh, improve the formulas and also improve the communication in our packs. So uh, of course, the, the, the main change is the name. So now it's Vitality Senior because we want to communicate um, in a more positive way, like vitality, it's not uh, a bad, like a bad word. And uh, of course, we are changing our formulas. And the main, well, the, the main change is that we are adding seven specific ingredients that have each uh, ingredient has a specific uh, benefit that it's proven. And uh, in this case, we are adding collagen, hyaluronic acid, omega-3, added vitamins and natural probiotics both for dogs and cats, 
And then on the recipes of dogs, we are adding probiotics. And on the recipes of cats, we are adding fibers. So with all of those ingredients, um, we are claiming uh, different benefits, like helps to improve vitality, supports strong joint and bones, helps to maintain muscle mass. So different uh, benefits that are proven. And uh, our main claim is that with these seven benefits, we are helping to maintain the quality of, of our dogs and cats. So this is uh, also uh, the, the main change in, on this relaunch. And then um, we have taken the, the opportunity to relaunch also our snacks, but here we don't have any uh, change in formula. So it's only like look and feel to uh, to align with the all of the all of the relaunch, and also to um, to highlight that um, we have the snacks that have uh, visible results in in and real results. So here we are communicating. Okay, and then so this was the the physio range, and here we have the the advanced veterinary diets. Uh, portfolio. So now uh, before we have seen that the urinary the urinary diet, but as you can see here, we have a very, very complex uh, portfolio with diets also uh, for atopic problems, gastroenteric, articular, weight balance, hypoallergenic diabetes, uh, renal urinary and urinary urine for dogs. And then in, a, in the case of cat, we have the urinary that we have already seen, renal, and we are we have also a diet for weight balance, gastroenteric and hypoallergenic problems. And um, we have a recovery that is a, a wet uh, format for both for dogs and cats. And I think that that's all. So the, the messages that we that we want to, that you take uh, to home is that on one side, uh, we have a very complete uh, portfolio on advanced veterinary diets. Alba has really explained very well all the characteristics of the of those um, diets for for the urinary uh, problems and urinary disease, uh, as you can see here, urinary renal and urinary low purine. and then from the other side that we have uh, then the advanced physio range that we are uh, relaunching it, we are reformulating it, and we are including prebiotics, probiotics, and fibers. Uh, to help to to maintain a healthy microbiota both in dogs and cats, and and we are continue uh, protecting them uh, from the from the intestine. And if you need more information about, if you want more information about uh, this relaunch and this change, of course we can we can provide you more <laughs> with more details. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sally. And uh, let's have a break. And after that, continue with uh, the presentation, Jordi presentation, okay? Tai dabar turėsim tada dešimties minučių pertrauką ir po pertraukos grįšime atgal.
Sveiki sugrįžę po pertraukėlės, tai galime toliau turbūt esti seminarą. Jordžiu, are you ready to continue the seminar? Yeah, let's, let's invite Jordi. Jorge. Jorge. ¿Me oyes? Ah, sí, yo creo que podemos empezar, ¿eh? ¿Te va vale. bien? Vale. Sí, sí. Ok. Um, this is the second lecture. It's about the feline idiopathic uh, cystitis. Um, we're talking about just uh, mainly what is uh, published about this, this disease. Um, this disease uh, is, uh, the theology is still unknown. They are trying to figure it out what happened or what can produce this disease and try to uh, find any kind of correlation with different infectious disease, mainly in with virus. Uh, for example, with the Calisi virus, but any kind of correlation was found. And uh, lately, they try to... Uh, to find a correlation with the morbidly virus that come in before with the CKD and they didn't find any kind of uh, correlation. Most of causes the feline lower urinary tract disease is the feline uh, idiopathic cystitis between the uh, 50, 55% uh, till to 65%. Uh, 
and there is different type of uh, FIC. One could be acute or could be chronic, and this uh, be classified between not obstructed, that is more frequent, is described between 80% uh, to 90% of cat. Obstructed, that is described in males, cat, uh, is described uh, between 15% uh, to 20%, uh, and a small number of recurrent of cat, male is 2%, but some uh, old uh, publication that describe uh, more frequently this kind of type, the FIC, that is a recurrent, but currently is, uh, is less common, so 2% is more adequate. And persistent or chronic type of uh, FIC that is always, uh, also is not uh, common and is described only in 2% of cat. There is different risk factor. Okay, one of them is the patient that include only the patient is the age, is this disease is described at uh, wherever age of the patient between one to uh, 15 years. And uh, more common is described in young animals and adults lost the, the seven years old. There is not great predisposition, predisposition. It's more described in males than in female, but probably secondary for the obstruction of when the cat come block uh, is more described in the sterilized uh, cat, mainly for the overweight. We have to remember that sterilized uh, sadly is one of the the causes of the overweight in, in cat and the sedentary lifestyle that sometimes could be correlated correlate with the sterilized, sterilized status, okay? And had be uh, more described in cat more stressful. Uh, this cat does have a behave more more uh, frightened or more nerve. There is another kind of uh, factor that is environmental factor that can produce or uh, uh, be associated with this disease is most described in multi-cat household cats and cats uh, that uh, tend to live indoor um, as can access to the high places or even uh, the type of litter has been described mainly when you use the non-camping uh, litter. Another environment, uh, environmental factor are the litter tray not is quite uh, or, or safe area. Food and water is not a safe area that can induce stress in the cat. Conflict with another cat in the house, move to a new home in the last three months, or no hunting behavior. And that is important mainly for the treatment. And another risk factor are the nutrition, uh, nutritional factor. Cats that be only feeding with dry diet, low water uh, uh, intake, uh, or frequent detailed changes have been associated with the FIC. According to the pathophysiology, what we know currently, this is a multifactorial disease that includes stress, include uh, the urethalian of the bladder, and include uh, the different substances that can be present in the urine. What's happening in a normal cat or healthy cat. When a cat is exposed to a chronic stress, this signal uh, is um, captured for the hypothalamus and can produce a feedback positive for, for produce corticotropin a releasing factor. And this corticotropin releasing factor produce a positive feedback for the, uh, in the anterior pituitary gland and this anterior pituitary gland produce ACTH. This ACTH stimulates the adrenal cortex for produce, producing a cortisol. And this cortisol uh, exerts uh, a negative feedback to the anterior pituitary gland and at the same time to the hypothalamus to try to uh, calm down all the stimulus. On the other hand, this corticotropin releasing factor produces a feedback positive to the leucus ceruleus. And this leucus ceruleus produces uh, noradrenaline mainly and adrenaline, 
and this stimulates uh, the, uh, the sympathetic nervous system. And this is party, this sympathetic nervous system uh, can stimulate directly to the bladder, okay? At the same time, the cortisol uh, exerts, uh, exerts uh, a, a negative feedback to the leukocele cerulis to try to calm down all the signal that arrive to the bladder. However, in cats uh, with FIC, we, we can see that all the, the signal that produce uh, or are produced by, by the chronic stress to the hypothalamus, the cortisol is unable to uh, generate uh, the negative feedback to the anterior pituitary gland and to the hypothalamus, so the cortisol is produced uh, constantly, okay? But one particularity of this cat uh, that have uh, FIC, that this cortisol, when you measure in the blood, the cortisol is not high that we everybody expect, but all the time is over the upper limit, okay? It's on in the upper limit of the, of the cortisol. On the other side, uh, this cat present a, just a little bit uh, side of the adrenal gland, but is within the normal limit, but in the lower uh, range, okay? Uh, and the, at, the, at the same time, the cortisol is, is not able to generate feedback, uh, negative feedback to the leukocele cerulean. For this reason, the sympathetic nervous system is all the time stimulating to the bladder, okay? What's happened with this uh, systemic nervous system? when it's not inhibited uh, by the cortisol, um, increase the uh, bladder permeability, which causes enhanced sensitive, uh, sensitive uh, afferent uh, activity and the clinical sign of the FIC. Cat with FIC cannot control inhibition of the pituitary and hypothalamus correctly, which perpetuate the release of the corticotropin uh, releasing factor. And at the same time, what happened in the bladder? <clears throat> we have to consider that the urine have pH, uh, can be low or high, uh, has potassium, has magnesium and, uh, and, ca and calcium. And when you see the urothelium this, uh, of, of this cat, uh, the number of glycosaminoglycanos uh, of the uro, uh, of the urothelium is affected and is lower or uh, damaged and this substance has direct contact with the urothelium and this urothelium uh, can be affected and can uh, produ produce inflammation. At the same time, the cat has uh, a higher number of mast cells, uh, of mast cells in the urothelium, a different to the another species. And these mast cells, when as stimulated, uh, are stimulated, uh, produce histamine, heparin, serotonin, cytokine, and prostaglandin. And these substance, su substance can affect to the C fibers. At the same time, when I explained before, this substance, the pH, uh, potassium, magnesium, calcium, when it's damaged to the glucosaminoglycans uh, layer, can affect at the same time the uh, C fibers. And these C fibers are non myelinated pain fiber in the submucus. So stimulate constantly uh, the pain in these fibers. And this fiber release the substance P and this substance P uh, goes to uh, the receptor. Even in this cat with FIC has a higher number of uh, substance P receptor for the stimulation is higher. And this stimulation of what produced this substance P in, in the urothelium produce pain, vasodilation, vasculitis, submucosal edema, smooth, smooth uh, muscle contraction, and mast cell granules, uh, granul, uh, degranulation. So in this way, it's like a vicious circle. <laughs> what clinical signs we can see in, in a cat with uh, with uh, idiopathic cystitis. In an obstructed cat, we can see normothermia to hypothermia, normal to weak uh, pulse, because some can some some cat 
comes uh, with the hypotension, dehydration, heart rate normal or bradycardia, marked bladder distension, possibly painful on palpation of this bladder, congestive uh, penis, uh, alopecia around the penis, up, uh, lethargy, anorexia, and vomiting. Uh, instead of an unobstructed or unblocked cut, you can see dysuria, estranguria, polyuria, hematuria, periuria, vocalization, excessive leaking of penis or vagina, alopecia of caudal abdomen, lethargy, and anorexia. How we can diagnose the idiopathic cystitis? Mainly, we have to keep in mind this is diagnosis for exclusion. So we have to rule out uh, the other causes, mainly UTI, mainly um, uh, urethiasis, uh, okay? And another uh, diseases such as stenosis of the urethra or even congenital disease or that, uh, that present in the, in the bladder. What tests we can do? Uh, 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 a CBC, okay. If uh, you can, you can do a complete blood uh, biochemistry, urine analysis with or without uh, urine culture, X-ray of the caudal abdomen, including penis. Uh, we don't forget we need to 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 do two views of the X-ray uh, to try to rule out uh, any kind of urolite mainly. Um, and uh, abdominal ultrasound. What's happened? Uh, sometimes if it's a, uh, it's a cat, a young cat that come to the consult uh, with the first episodes of the of the uh, idiopathic cystitis, um, mainly you can try to save some money for the for the for the owner. A minimum you can you can do uh, an hematocrite and total proteins. Uh, only creatinine, urea, and electrolytes, and calcium. Uh, uh, no, it include the urine culture. Um, and maybe you can try to not to do the abdominal ultrasound. What's happened that where are we where are I am working is a referral center, so they come very complicated cases. So for this, uh, many of time I do all all of these uh, tests. Okay, sometimes we can try to think that x-rays can, if we, I do an x-ray, I can say not to do the abdominal ultrasound, but we have to think that these two imaging tests are complementary, okay? Uh, what is important, when we see an unblocked cat, uh, we have to wait before doing any kind of test if the animal is very unstable. Okay, or severe and stable because if you stress so much to the cat, can produce the death. Okay, uh, it's important to do an ECG or try to use uh, to use a monitor to see if the patient presents any kind of arrhythmia or bradycardia due to the hyperkalemia or the metabolic acidosis. Okay, and in when the patient is severely uh, ill or more unstable. I do a uh, venous block gases to try to evaluate the acidosis that key patient uh, can present. Okay, when we say uh, a patient, this is a table with the minimum test that you can do to try to um, to try to differentiate or rule out another causes. Maybe if you see an acute case, uh, we have to think that uh, FIC is uh, self limited. It's more frequent that I said, but the main differential diagnosis are urolite, and maybe with the only with the urinalysis and X-ray or ultrasound is enough. But we have to see the patient. I mean, because if the patient uh, is more unstable, you need to do blood test. Okay, when you see a recurrent case of uh, FIC. Again, the main uh, the difference diagnosis has urolite behavior changes or UTI, okay? And you need to do urinalyze six a rate or ultrasound and ultrasound etiological study uh, uh, to do blood works and urinary culture, okay? And if you see a persistent or chronic F FIC, uh, you have to, uh, 
to differentiate from your light behavior changes, UTI, neoplasm, anatomical changes, okay? But more important, you have to see the, the patient because it's the patient that uh, is recurrent or chronic or had been treated before in another clinic, maybe, or you must to do more tests to try to uh, figure it out what is happening in this patient and, to, and try to arrive to a final diagnosis. This paper I want to share with you because I think are very interesting because all the time when all biomarkers then try to differentiate between uh, cystitis or, or bacterial cystitis versus uh, um, uh, idiopathic cystitis, no, no market have been very promised for us. But these two articles or recent articles have tried to uh, find this uh, biomarker, and one of them is the serum dopamine. And these uh, levels of the dopamine in the blood can differ differentiate between FIC and bacteria society and healthy cats. And I think it's very interesting. I mean, because this test uh, prove or show a sensitivity of 90% um, and a specificity low or moderate uh, the 65 percent but had a positive predictive value of almost 80 percent and negative predictive value the 66 uh, percent that is a new approach for this disease and maybe in the future we can see more biomarkers and this another biomarker that i think is more interesting for the result this is the serum nerve growth factor this factor is found uh, to be to be elevated in cat with FIC compared to cat with bacteria cystitis or healthy cat, and this biomarker show a sense, show a sensitivity of uh, one hundred percent and a specificity uh, of seventy uh, 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 sorry sixty six percent, but the positive predictive value is. Um, seventy-five percent, and the negative predictive value is one hundred percent. That is very interesting because this could be a very good test uh, for a screening test. I mean that if you obtain a negative result, the probability or likely that this patient present FAC is very low. But more study needed to obtain any kind of uh, conclusion. These two study I think are very interesting as well. Because all the time when we see a recurring cat with fluid, we all the time we try to think that, okay, the first time I diagnose uh, idiopathic static, all the time when I see the cat again in the future a recurrent episode, I think it's the same. But this article uh, described all totally different or contradictory. I mean, if you see these cases, um, in these cases, in the first episode was uh, idiopathic static, but in another episode was plaque, a small urolite, a infection, another episode, another infection. So it's important to consider this. And this another study that uh, include uh, 100 cats, they in the relapse found different causes. I mean, they found the cat in the beginning presented by Urolithiasis by um, uh, idiopathic uh, cystati or uh, UTI. In the future episode, they find another causes like this study. For this reason, the message of this study is: when you see a recurrent uh, cat with uh, fluid, is necessary or is needed to try to make. Um, and uh, make or repeat uh, repeat the test to try to arrive to uh, to a final diagnosis because sometimes it's not the same the is not the same cause. How we can treat obstructive cat? <clears throat> First, if if the cat present hypovolemic shock, we need to restore the fluid with crystalloid. I use uh, I prefer to use ringer lactate all the time. We can think okay. The ringer lactate has uh, potassium, but the level of potassium that ringer lactate has 
is uh, very low, so not influenced so much on the level in the blood of the potassium of the patient, okay? And if the, pres if the patient presents hypotension, we need to restart the, the, the tension with crystalline volumes. You can use 10 to 20 milli uh, milliliters per kilogram over 10 or 15 to, to 30 minutes and reevaluate constantly uh, the, the systolic blood pressure. You can use even three consecutive volumes. Okay, if you cannot um, normalize uh, the hypo uh, the, the tension, you can use another uh, an, another um, strategies such as use the norepinephrine or fresh frozen plasma or frozen plasma. It, here is important to be very careful with the synthetic colloid MOS or HES, okay? Because in human being or in laboratory dogs have been associated with kidney failure in kidney failure for that reason. Sometimes when you see a cat, blocked cat with uh, with fluid, somebody, someone, uh, uh, some sometimes you don't know if the patient has a concurrent acute uh, renal failure, okay? It's important to remember that you have to re rehydrate the patient between four to eight hours if this patient doesn't have any kind of heart disease. And uh, later when you uh, catheterize the patient, replace the fluid according, the, the according to the urine output, okay? Because when you uh, uh, unblock the patient, uh, this patient presents post-obstructive polyuria. The, hypo, the hypo, uh, hypothermia, the hypothermia, when the patient presents uh, less than 36.5 uh, 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 degree, Celsius degree, you have to uh, be active to try to increase the temperature of the patient. And you can use a uh, hair dry, okay, for if the patient uh, to try to not stress so much with the hair dry, you can you, you can put a um, cotton wool in the ear cut uh, to try to avoid the noise and the stress of the of the patient. You can use lamps, cold wa water bottle, warm sandbags, blanket. I I try to not to use glove because sometimes uh, the fingernails of the cat can produce tears in the gloves and. <laughs> and break the gloves and, and uh, generate burns in the cat. So be very careful with burns. On the other side, on the other hand, hyperkalemia, you can classify the hyperkalemia according to the clinical sign, according to the level of the, of the potassium in the blood. We can talk about the mild hyperkalemia when the percent less than seven uh, millimol or milliequivalent uh, per per liter. So you can make a cysto uh, synthesis, or you can uh, unblock the cat with the catheter, uh, the catheter, and only with the fluid uh, you can you can treat it. Okay, but. You have to consider some cats uh, with the level can present bradycardia or can present arrhythmia. So all the time you, when you see hyperkalemia, you need to do an ECG or monitor side the patient with the monitor to see the electrocardiogram for, for see this patient needs more uh, attention or another manage. When you see a moderate to severe, uh, to severe um, hyperkalemia, plus arrhythmia, uh, usually is between uh, seven to uh, nine milli equivalent uh, of potassium. You can use calcium gluconate, okay? This calcium uh, gluconate works as cardioprotector and the, 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 dose, the dose that, that I can use uh, or I, I used to use is one milliliter per kilogram during five to uh, 10 minutes, okay? It, all the time you have to see the monitor because when you put uh, very quick the calcium gluconate, you can induce more arrhythmia, okay? And when the patient presents a severe uh, hyperkalemia plus arrhythmia, over you, you see this patient with a value of potassium over uh, nine, 
uh, you can have to use rapid acting insulin uh, between uh, 0 0.1 to uh, 0 0.25 uh, international unity per kilogram intramuscular. And at the same time, I do um, a bolus of glucose in 10 minutes and add a glucose uh, to 5% supplement, uh, supplemented in the in the fluid, in the bottle of fluid, okay? And we have to consider that sometimes a marked acidosis can produce uh, arrhythmia, so some patient can need uh, bicarbonate, okay? Mainly when we need to use bicarbonate, when we uh, see a metabolic acidosis and the pH is uh, below seven to uh, seven 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 point uh, one, okay. And you can try to use again ringer lactato. We have to think that ringer lactate have a tamponate. A lactate is tamponate, so it's useful for 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 the acidosis. And uh, the bicarbonate, uh, there is a formula that you can use mainly based it in the in the Venus Venus gases is zero point three per body weight in kilogram uh, per base excess that you obtain when you measure the the gases. Okay, you put one third uh, intravenous slow in in fifteen minutes. Uh, all the time seeing the monitor and later a bolus inside of the bottle of, of fluid. For the vomiting, uh, the best option I think is a maropitan. The maropitan I used to use a one milligram, milligram per kilogram, but sometimes when you are not able to control the, the vomiting, you can use a higher dose of maropitan of label but you can use a uh, two milli uh, milligram of, or even in some cats, you can increase more, okay? But when I have a patient, when I when I, I, I have not able to control the vomiting with two uh, milligram per kilogram, I have another um, anti antimedic is uh, the ondansetron, okay? We have to remind that the metoclopramide is not antimetic specifically in the cat because the cat doesn't have dopamine receptor in the um, vomiting sound trigger. Another thing that we have to consider that some cat or, or low number of cat can present at the same time hypocalcemia. The cause is not clear. There are only hypothesis about that could be secondary because the phosphorus retention uh, can, for that uh, effect mass, the phosphorus for the calcium can decrease the levels of calcium, PTH resistance, or even uh, for uh, AC based disturbance. Um, when we see a cat with hypocalcemia, uh, the recommendation is measure the genocide calcium to obtain. Uh, uh, a, a, a more accurate uh, result. The mild hypocalcemia have been described in thirty uh, in thirty seven percent of cats, and severe hypocalcemia is less common. Okay, within the group of cats with hypocalcemia. Okay, how we can recognize uh, the hypocalcemia? The uh, or when we have to treat the the hypocalcemia when the cat present. A clinical sign of hypocalcemia, such as stiffness, tremors, seizure, hyperstermia. Okay, and you can try the, the hypocalcemia with calcium gluconate again in the same way that I described uh, before. Okay, to categorize uh, the cat all the time is needed to be the cat serrated or anesthetized. Okay. And this is the combination that used the 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 anesthesia that I was working before, and there is a combination adequately when a patient is not so much unstable, okay. Or you can use a sacro a block, okay, and uh, wait in uh, uh, putting inside a lidocaine, okay. 
Um, another study have, uh, had described that uh, if you use intravesical uh, atracurium, it's more easy to categorize the cat. But um, there is one study in UK, in the UK, don't observe that uh, people with that or without experience can categorize the cat uh, more easier uh, in comparison when they doesn't use atracurium. Um, what important thing that we we have uh, to keep in mind is we can or not we can uh, categorize a cat uh, without any kind of sedation or anesthesia. Uh, it's not recommended because if the cat move or jump or something, you can uh, can produce a tear in the urethra, and this tear can produce a secondary stenosis. For that reason, when you see a patient is so much unstable, and maybe you can try to do first, uh, like a first step, uh, cystocentesis, and this cystocentesis can uh, allow you to gain some time to try to stabilize to the patient before to to put the catheter catheter the the cat. But if you are very good catheter. Uh, making catheterization in cat, you can try to do it uh, in a patient without any kind of sedation, but it's not recommended. Okay, for make the catheterization in cat, uh, you can shave hair around the penis, and you need to wash a very very uh, um, to wash uh, all the all the the sound that you you have clip. Okay, and um, move the foreskin and um, move the gland uh, and 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 wash or clean the the glands with the chlorhexidine, and uh, the recommendation after to do that you can put uh, a piece of glass socket with warm water in the penis for three to five minutes to try to delay uh, the ure urethra. This. We can use it mainly when we are suspect that this patient present a plaque, okay? Because this plaque uh, is liberated from the urethra because the urethra is basolated and is easy uh, to remove only with uh, this doing random movement from the base to the tip of the of the penis, okay? <clears throat> Which kind of catheter is better in these cats? Well. We know there is a lot of type of catheter, mainly the 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 used or, or used to use mainly is this one. This one has been the there is produced less recurrence in comparison to the other type of catheter, and we have to consider the friends of the catheter because one study has shown that when the catheter is smaller, the recurrence is is low okay um another thing that we can use is a sterile uh, placement of gel on the catheter on the tip of the catheter before to catheterize the 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 cat and and try to make the suture with ophthalmologic suture to try to not be so much traumatic in the propulsion okay um and and try to use the atraumatic needle and the stitch loose to try to avoid a necrosis of the prepucium. So it's very important that the ES that present the male dogs in cat is small, okay? But before to catheterize, the recommendation is elevate the, the penis and try to be the more parallel to the spine and it's more easier uh, to, to, to make the catheterization all the time we have to be sterile, please, sterile. We have to use sterile gloves, okay? And sometimes you can use with uh, Minnesota catheter that to make flushing before to put the catheter, but I used to use, to, I used to do directly with the, with the catheter. Okay. Uh, when we do the, or when we have to, uh, when we have to decide 
if the catheter have to be permanent for for a two for two days in the cat, mainly for the clinical signs of the patient, if the patient present azotemia, if the patient uh, present hyperkalemia, or if the patient present marked hematuria, because we need that uh, treat uh, this cat with the catheter till all the all the parameters are within the normal limits, even if the more clear the 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 urine. Sometimes there is a um, discussion if the any benefits or not if you do a lavage of the of the urinary bladder. There is one study that they didn't find any kind of differentiation between if you do lavage or not you do in the recurrency. But in my experience, uh, I do the lavage because. Uh, the behave or, or, or the stress or discomfort of the cat is less because when, I don't know if you sometimes have, or you know, somebody has cystitis, it's like a burn in your, in your, in your bladder. So this is discomfort for the cat. So I used uh, the, the, the wash. Okay. Mainly try to do the wash till the, the urine is more clear. And stop to do the the wash, or sometimes uh, I do the wash every uh, for uh, every four hours um, uh, in the in, in the first days of the treatment. Okay, when and how to remove the catheter? You have to remove the catheter mainly in in one and um, one half day. Okay, uh, there you can the the the. Re, there is the azotemia has to be resolved as well the uh, the postostructive uh, diuresis the urine could be or should be uh, more clear uh, and when you move the the catheter the recommendation is to sedate the patient or anesthetize the patient uh, check all the time when you retire the the catheter check the permeability of the ureta when removing the catheter I I as the cat is uh, uh, sedated, uh, I make a, a gentle pressure of the bladder and I see if if able to urine or not, okay? Um, another thing that in the past is, was recommended is what recommended when you retire the, or remove the, the catheter is to do an urinalysis to detect infection, mainly bacteria, or even to try to do an urine culture, what's happened? Uh, right now, is, that is not recommended because uh, we use, we assume that when you do a catheterized the cat and when you use a closed circuit, some kind of bacteria can colonize that um, pack or bottle that you use when you uh, or the urine is 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 collected. Okay, and. If the if the cat doesn't have any kind of sign the UTI in the future or on the couple of days after the the catheter was removed, um, it's not needed to to do a, a culture or urine analysis. And remember, please, all the time try to use a closed system of the urine because if you use an open system. Is predisposed to uh, multi-resistant uh, infection. Uh, is more uh, sometimes to, you cannot control how much empty or 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 fill is the is the is the bladder. So more important all the time, maintain a close circuit when you maintain catheterized a cat during the hospitalization. Okay, and another th uh, thing that I used to use um, this soft um, Elizabeth uh, uh, collar. How when I treated the uh, idiopathic cystitis? When a cat is uh, unblocked, we can use uh, different treatment. And one first line treatment is analgesic. Curiously, there is not there is not any study evaluating the buprenorphine a cat with buprenorphine versus without buprenorphine. Okay, because it could be a little bit um, 
not recommended because for 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 the animal for for the analgesic the main uh, medi drug that we use is buprenorphine and the buprenorphine you can use intravenous or transmucosal oral okay subcutaneous the absorption is not so good even in in comparison between transmucosal uh, oral is better transmucosal in comparison with the uh, subcutaneous dose of buprenorphine. The butorphanol, butorphanol, as you know, is no potent analgesic, so I don't recommend. And fentanyl, sometimes I have to be patient with so much pain for, for the hematuria. Uh, I, so in two or three times, I have used uh, fentanyl. What's happened with the meloxicam? Meloxicam, there is no evidence that uh, is a good option for this cat. Even in this study and different dose, there is no difference between recurrence uh, or episodes of recurrence when you use this kind of, of drug. Even you you have to think this is an insight at this insight in a patient and the hydrated patient can induce or produce an acute um uh, uh, renal failure and that is important to consider because when I when I was working some cats come to the hospital with a renal failure secondary for the NSAID that was put it for for his general bed and the prednisone there is another study that there is not any kind of evidence to use prednisone in this patient because the recurrence was the same when do, when you don't use it okay I think that in the future, another medicament or drug that we can use is the gabapentin and the pregabalin, but we don't have currently a study to recommend, but it's another good option, or maybe you can try to use it in those chronic cases or recurrent cases that when you use only buprenorphine is not enough. Antispasmodic, mainly we can use the um, prasocin, okay? There is different dose. The dose that more recommended is 0.5, okay? Twice uh, or three times a day um, for five or, or seven day. Um, that is the most that I, I use, but I when I'm talking about the prasocin, we have to, 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 to think that the prasocin is a selective alpha-1 antagonist, relax the mus and musculature of the retra and only the smooth uh, musculature in the ureta is around uh, 30 to 40 percent of the proximal ureta. So we have a lot of ureta without a kind of musculature. So sometimes uh, uh, you can use mainly in recurrent cases or current cases, you can plan to use the uh, straight, uh, straight musculature blocker, mainly diazepam or amprazolam. But we have to remind that the diazepam, you can you have to use oral diazepam, and this oral diazepam has been in the past associated with uh, liver necrosis. And these are two recent studies about the use of prasocin in cats with, uh, with uh, FIC. And these two studies didn't find any kind of benefit when you use prasocin. I mean that when they use uh, this uh, drug, the number of recurrence was the same uh, at the at the when you you don't use it, or even in this in this study was higher. And this study said that maybe that give medication can induce stress in the cat, and this stress can produce the relapse. Okay, but what's happened in these studies that okay. when you when you see the frequency only they use the frequency every twelve hour in both in both of them. Okay, okay. study oh, yes. evaluate uh, if we use every eight hours. That would be very interesting. I I still use processing until uh, I don't see any kind of study that processing doesn't work when you use it every eight hours. Thank you. Thank you. Another very important thing to do multimodal environmental modification. Always play routine with the cat uh, at least uh, uh, 15 minutes uh, a day. 
food distance from the litter tray, water distance from the litter tray, scratching posts, elevate observation sites to ventilate everything. Uh, cat that uh, relax, hiding places, uh, litter tray care, preferred type of litter because mm -hmm. sometimes prefer one kind of litter or agglomerate litter, another no. So that is important to try to detect in your patient. Uh, and, uh, and all the time you have to put one more tray than the number of cat that I uh, that in home. Water phone time and what little plus number the cat at home. <clears throat> that is important uh, according to when you want to use the the water phone time. That sometimes the cat the cat needs a time to use to use the the water phone time for you have to try to maintain the phone time at the same time with the water walls during seventy during seven to uh, 15 days at least. And these are two study that try to evaluate uh, if the uh, waterfront time can reduce the osmolality or the specific gravity. And they didn't find any kind of change when you use the water uh, front time or not. Different type of front time, but if we read both uh, studies, the time the the time that they allowed to the cat uh, used to use the 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 water front is not enough. I say before, uh, you need seven days or one week to two weeks, and only in in this study only used uh, when. 24 hour and this one was only a short period of day. So we have to interpret it uh, or we, we have to be careful uh, when interpreting this kind of studies. Another thing important is the diet, okay? That is pivotal, I think. I mean, because um, there is a study when, when you use wet diet, the recurrence in one year was only 11% in the patient. But when you use dry diet, the recurrence was 39% in one year. For that reason, it's very important the diet, okay? What happened or what, what I mentioned in the lecture before? Some cat loves the dry diet. So if you try to wet diet, can you induce the stress? For that reason, you have to try to give the opportunity to the cat to elect which kind of diet you prefer. And another thing, another concern that we have to, to, to consider is the price of the wet diet that is higher in comparison with the, the drug diet. What is our objective? Is try to decrease the urinary specific gravity less to 1040, okay? And that has been uh, described that decreased the number of recurrence in, in these cats. If you want to try to change the type of, uh, of diet, for, for example, the urinary diet that you can use for this kind of diseases or because sometimes uh, the, the idiopathic cystitis is associated with the plaques. If you want to use a uh, dry diet or wet diet, the change of diet the normal diet that he take before should be gradual, okay? Because if you change uh, more quickly um, the the type of diet can induce the stress. And some cat again need weeks or need months to just to to eat the the new diet, okay? Um, what's happening with the but a uh, feeling facial pheromone fairly way. That is the most no uh, kind of facial pheromone in cat. There is no so much evidence to try to recommend like a first uh, line of treatment because um, the only study is evaluating the anxiety in cat never has been used it, uh, or evaluated in cat with FIC. Okay, is sometimes you can use in recurrent cases on chronic cases because you can see an individual response, but it's not recommended uh, like in the past, like a first line of treatment. 
glucose amino glycans, again, there is not so much evidence to uh, recommend as a first line uh, a treatment, okay? Because uh, you never know how much of the glucose amino glycans that you give orally arrive to the, to the bladder uh, to try to uh, fix the that zones of glucose amino glycans that doesn't have in in some parts of the of the urethelium. So uh, another thing that I consider all the time that if you see all the pills are very big and sometimes when you try to give a big pill a cut can induce again the stress and can induce the FIC in in these patients. So it's not recommended like a first line uh, of treatment. Another kind of nutraceptical supplement, like a tryptophan or casein or casocepine, there is not so much evidence as well. I mean, because there is so much kind of uh, glucosaminoglycans plus this kind of nutraceutical supplement. But uh, again, we don't have how much is absorbed in the intestine, how much arrived to the blood, or uh, how much arrived, really arrived to the to the bladder so you can use again when you have a uh, recurrent cases or chronic cases and you don't know how to do and you have done all your protocol again uh, with all all the tests you can try to use this kind of 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 uh, nutraceutical supplement but right now has mentioned before and the stress diet of affinity have this kind of nutraceutical supplement and you can avoid to give um, another pill. This is a, a treatment that is recommended, okay, only for chronic cases or recurrent cases. This is um, triptyline. This is anti, is, is a tricycle antidepressant and is anticholinergic, antihistamine, sympathetolytic, analgesic, anti-inflammatory. If we see all of these, I have described before in the slide of the pathophysiology for this very interesting drug uh, for this disease. Okay, another uh, mention it, but there is not any kind of studies the floxetine, but uh, there is not a group of cases or cat publishes only case report and you can use as well. But I mean, triptyline has side effects, mainly sedation, lethargy, weight gain, and urinary uh, retention. So this urinary retention can predispose to a stone, we didn't know, but it's important to consider. And the FIC is more described in, in obvious cast. Also, again, we can induce uh, the weight gain and and the cat produce the FIC, okay? It's important that the response to the amitriptyline is not immediately, immediately. is uh, mainly you can see a response between uh, after two weeks or two months, one month to the treatment. It's not uh, immediately the, the, the response to this treatment. So to see this uh, medicament, the amitriptyline, you can see maybe it's very good option in acute cases, okay? So one study <clears throat> used it in acute cases of, um, uh, of idiopathic cystitis, but they didn't uh, find any kind of response for this treatment is not, for this reason, this treatment is not recommended in cat with acute cases of idiopathic cystitis. On the other hand, other, um, uh, when you use in chronic or recurrent cases, decrease 60% of the clinical signs of CAT for that reason is a very important treatment in chronic cases or recurrent cases, okay? When you decide to stop the, the, the amitriptyline, you can stop after six months of the treatment. And when you see any kind of clinical sign again in a cat or minimal clinical sign in a cat, and you have to do a withdrawal of medication uh, slowly, like when you use uh, glucocorticoids, okay? In two weeks, every two weeks, you, you have to reduce the dose to <clears throat> stop totally. When you don't see any kind of 
response to the medical treatment or even some some owners tell you if you cut block again i uh, have to do the euthanasia you can you can uh, propose to do the surgery the most common surgery is perineal urethrostomy and this, this recommend um maybe mainly for cystitis and can, can recurrent the clinical signs or you can recommend a rupture of the pain or example uh, urethral stenosis okay e, um here uh the recurrence when you use this kind of surgery in FIC the recurrence on the clinical signs but no block of the cut is the 66 percent okay the half of the cat recu uh, have recurrence of the clinical sign that's important to say uh, to the to the owner okay but the owner satisfaction with kind of surgery uh, surgery is high is between 75 percent uh, to 96 percent and this is picture the 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 the, the surgery i am internist so i don't know so much about surgery and there is another type of of uh, uretrostomy, this called prepubic uretrostomy surgery, is not common to use it in in cat with uh, cystitis, uh, idiopathic cystitis. Um, but sometimes, if you produce with the catheterization ureter rupture, maybe you can have to recur to this kind of, of surgery. But this surgery, have you see, the bladder is connected directly to the cauda abdomen. And can produce urinary incontinence, uh, dermatitis uh, in this patient. And finally, when you uh, see which one is better, perineal urethrostomy, urethrostomy, when you see the study, is um, obviously the kind of surgery is different and is predictable that, that perineal urethrostomy is better than prepubic urethrostomy, and my experience. Uh, also, so it's important that uh, side effect of the perineal uh, urethrostomy, you can observe UTI, UTI or recurrent UTI almost in in nineteen percent of cat. Sterile cystitis is like a FIC in 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 uh, twenty four percent of cat, and you can see ura, urinary incontinence, but tend to be uh, for a short time unless uh, that incontinence disappear. Uh, ureteral obstruction in 5% in of cut, stenosis secondary for the surgery, almost 3% of cut, uh, subcutaneous urinary leakage uh, also in almost 3% uh, of cut, and dermatitis in the round of the zone of the surgery, sometimes zero or sometimes depends on the study, 4.5%. So in the immediately complication, you can see 62% of complication with the perineal urethrostomy. And the long-term complication, if we see the UTI is remain very, very similar and the short-term complication and cystitis, cystitis decreased a lot and the rest is not present and the total long-term complication is only um only 40 uh, 14.3% of cats and the uh, uh, improve of uh, quality of life according to the owner is uh, 93% in this cat and that's it and i hope you enjoy this lecture okay Great, uh, dear colleagues, uh, I would like to express my gratitude uh, for taking uh, this time for attend this seminar, especially considering that tomorrow is a day off in Lithuania, and I hope you found uh, the format helpful and learned something new, useful. Uh, we are ready to stay for 20-30 minutes and answer your question. Uh, and uh, by the way, we are planning to organize three more seminars this year, uh, and uh, we would greatly appreciate uh, for your feedback. Please let us know if you would like, if you like something in sem seminar or uh, you want to improve something. 
Uh, you can send a uh, question uh, either through our partner Svetma in Lithuania. Thank you for all the team, uh, Vetma team, for organizing this uh, format. And uh, let's uh, go to the question. If you have any, please uh, uh, raise your hand and uh, or write it in the chat. Uh, we are ready to to answer to answer for for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it looks like uh, everything is clear. Okay, great. Yeah, uh, don't worry. You can uh, uh, send your question and feedback through through our partners, as I said before, Vetma, uh, and uh, we will answer uh, for your question. Please prepare your question for next meeting, which will uh, which we hold in April, uh, and. Um, if you finished, uh, or if we finished, uh, I just want to uh, wish you have a nice weekend, long weekend. Uh, if you have a question, we will be here for five minutes at least. Thank you. Thank you very much. And have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Have a nice weekend. Okay. Okay. We will wait your questions through um, our partners. Okay. And yeah, I, I think it's time to say uh, have a nice evening and weekend. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye, bye bye. Thank you. Maybe 15.